ombre gel polish. I love it. A very soft and beautiful look, but it's actually a little hard to do. I've got my own technique. I want to share it with you. Let's get started. So the thing with ombre is when you do an ombre, you'll find some are easier than others. Colors that are very similar to each other, like a blue and a green, like I have on this end. Look how adorable. They're a little bit easier to do because they're closer in shade. Colors that are further apart, they're very contrasty, like a black and a white, is a little bit harder because you have two contrasting colors you're trying to blend. So I've got a little tip for that. This is what I'm going to show you. Look at these ones. So this one here, that is two colors. This is three colors. This is just two colors. This is two colors. And this is three colors. So you can see all the colors that we have. I mean, if you just look at this one, this is three colors. And look how many colors you see. Look at this. This is just two colors. But look how many different colors you see. And that's the trick in the blending. So how do we do that? Well, there's all sorts of ways we can do it. There's lots of unique tools out there. I'm just going to buff this tip. I find it's a little bit easier. So the gel really, of course, gel likes to hang on to it, sort of bite into the product that you're using. So for this purpose, we're just using a tip. I'm just going to gently buff it. I'm going to get rid of some of the dust. Okay, I'm going to get me glasses. So what I want to do now, if you're doing some colors that are softer, you don't have to put a white down, but sometimes if you put down a white, the color might jump a little bit more and you might need a little help doing that with some colors. So just think about that. I'm not going to do that here. This is what I did with one brush. I took one of my old brushes and you can get a little pair of scissors and you can cut your own. You can buy ombre brushes like this, but if you don't have one on hand, then you can just cut little tiny hairs out of there and create your own ombre brush. See what I'm doing there? You can do that and don't go all the way up. Just you just need the end and you can kind of do a stipple effect and you can do that. It that doesn't work that well for me. That's why I'm going to show you my way. And then you can just have a gel brush like this. And um, this is what I did for this hand. Actually, I just put blue on this side, green on this side, and I went down the center like that and blended it together. So I get this nice, soft ombre. But those colors are very similar, so they're easier, and it's my opposite hand, so I went the easy way on that. I'm, I'm going to use this brush. Look at this. I like this type of brush, and I'll show you why. It's so tiny and delicate. Let me get there. Okay, so I'm going to show you, I think we'll do this one. We'll do this beautiful, look how many shades are in there, and that's just two colors. And that's how I got this look. I used a Kira Sky Secret Effect, and I got a very dark color and a light pink and this one is called Rule Saint Pink. So we want to get our tip and we want to, whichever one you want to do first, you want to start with the light or the dark. Just put whatever color you want to start on first. And then I'm going to put the pink at the other end. I guess I could have put these a little closer together. And I'm going to mix these guys. And I'm going to add that to the center. Now what I do do, what I do do, <laughs> is I do keep a soaked, lint-free pad right there. And the reason being is, I will take my paintbrush and I will dab it on and I will use my other finger and fold it together so I can squeeze the paint right out of it because you want fresh paint. No residue from another color when you're trying to blend. That's the ticket, really. So I'm going to take the darker color and rather than blending the purple with the pink or the light with the dark, on the nail, I'm going to create the blended color in between and put it on the nail and blend the dark purple with the medium purple and the 
light pink with the medium purple. So you're not blending the dark with the dark, or dark with the light in such a contrast. So I'm sort of trying to meet it halfway. So it just makes your blending a little bit easier. And one thing I do do is I do in little circles. I'm like mixing. See that? I'm blending those two right on the nail like that. Then I'm going to clean it. That's really important. Cleaning it all the time, fresh bristles. Then I'm gonna go into the pink. And I'm gonna pick up some of that purple. And I'm gonna blend those two together. Now, of course, it looks horrible still, right? It's a lot of blending. Okay, so now with the lightest touch, and you can use it with that brush that we cut up and whichever you know works for you. I find though this tiny little brush going back and forth in one direction like from top to bottom or bottom to top with a clean brush every time I do that. I'm just gonna go on the side here. Right now I'm just focusing on the side. And I'm just gonna gently blend it. You can go back and forth in one spot but just a very small spot. Don't go too far. And then clean it. And then I'm gonna go right back on this spot. Cleaning it. And I'll dab it in my alcohol and clean that bristle off. And then this guy now. This will be the harder one because this is the lighter one. Mixing with the darker one. And if you find you need a little bit more to blend with, because you gotta have, a, a, not a ton, but you gotta have a fair amount on there to give it something to blend with. Where we make the mistake is, if we're doing a little blend like this, try to stay within that small area where you're blending those two colors together, okay? Because once you go, let's say you're blending these two colors together, once you go up into that area, See the darker color? Looks good. But once you bring it back again, you're going to bring that purple back into your pink again and you're going to make it all streaky. So go one way or the other or stay in a spot when you're blending. So like for example, I could go all the way down the side. I'm going to start at the dark. My brush is clean. I'm going to start at the dark, just slightly brushing it. I'm now going into the medium purple and now I'm coming out of the medium purple. See how it's starting to really blend? And I'm going into the light pink. I'm literally kind of bringing that color all the way down. That's another reason why you don't want to start with too much dark at the top. Actually, don't you saw how little I put at the top. You see the long nail? There was only like a quarter of it, maybe a fifth of the whole nail that I put the dark on, because you'll blend it right down. And if this is a tip that we're using, of course, we can flip it upside down. Not so easy to do when it's attached to a person. <laughs> so you can just flip it upside down. And I got a little bit more pink. And now I'm going to blend my pink this way. And I'm going into that mauvey purple. See how it just softened right in there? I keep cleaning, that's what I'm going away to do. I remember I'm starting up here, but I'm starting with a clean brush, got some pink on there. And I'm just really working this purple and pink together. Just going down the side again. Now, I did all these this morning having fun playing with different colors. And then I did these colors and I actually really liked them. I started blending them together and I actually had it. It was looking pretty good. It almost reminds me of the ocean, like the sand and the water. But then I started getting kind of streaky and I just, I guess I lost my patience. <laughs> So what I'm getting at is if it's not working for you, don't give up on it. You just might not be in an artistic mood, in the headspace. Even though you're in the mood to do it, it might not just be working for you because maybe your hands aren't working the way your mind is thinking. 
So it doesn't mean that you are terrible at it or you're not going to get it. It just means maybe you're not going to get it today. <laughs> and that's okay. Okay, so I'm going to give it a nuke and then we're going to do a second coat. It does seem to look better if you do do a second coat. So that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so I'm gonna put my second layer on. Remember, just put a little bit of the dark. The dark is very strong, so it will blend with all your other colors. And I'm gonna put the pink. mixed color in between. Clean your brush. That's probably the biggest tip in this is always cleaning that brush to making sure you're working with a clean brush because that can really frustrate the whole process. Just make sure you've got ample amount of product on your brush and on the nail. Otherwise, it can look a little streaky. You can get a little bit crazy trying to get it perfect. <laughs> but just remember, nothing is perfect. And the more you do something, the better you'll get at it. I even did that with myself with doing this design, the more I did it. So sometimes you just have to call it and you nuke it. Okay, so even though it can look a little streaky, don't panic because the top coat, this goes with any art really, can help smooth it out a little. Check this out. See, it wasn't perfect, of course, but that's okay. Look at that. The top coat just kind of smooths it right out. We could take a look at the reveals. You can see the other ones that are so smooth and they weren't perfect going in before the top coat. This one I did this morning and this one I just did. It's kind of like a smoky ombre. As you can see, any color combination you want. Remember, the more contrast, the harder it is to blend. The closer they are together in color, the easier it is. If you want to see me do this in nail polish, it's adorable. And yes, it does work in polish, but you do it a little bit differently. This will show you how. 